Little Susie's Six Teachers, First Series, by Elizabeth Prentice. This is recorded to celebrate the sixth anniversary of LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Little Susie's Six Teachers, First Series. Chapter 1. Perhaps you think you are going to hear that little Susie went to school, but you are not. All the teachers she had lived in the house with her, and all the lessons they taught her were lessons without books. I shall not tell you even the names of half of them, lest you should get tired. I shall tell you of only six. It is a common saying that babies bring love into the world with them. If you ask your mamma whether you did, I know what she will say. She will smile kindly upon you and say, Yes, indeed, you little dear. So Susie brought her first teacher with her, and her name was Mrs. Love. She was just such a teacher as a baby likes. She had a gentle, sweet face and a soft, kind voice. Her cheeks were of a beautiful rose color, and her forehead was smooth and white. Most of the other teachers consulted her before they taught Susie any lessons, and Mr. Payne, who was one of them, often stayed away weeks at a time because Mrs. Love took such good care of Susie herself. Mr. Payne was not so pleasant to look at as Mrs. Love. He looked rather pale and tired. He was grave and serious, and his forehead was wrinkled. But for all that, he taught Susie some very good lessons, and even Mrs. Love sometimes sent for him. Did you ever see a little lamb bounding over the soft grass? Did you ever hear a bird sing to another bird away out in the woods? If you ever did, you know how Miss Joy looked when she came dancing in to see Susie, and how her voice sounded when she taught her such pleasant lessons as she knew how to teach. She was a little bit of a creature, with waving sunny hair and bright eyes, sparkling with health and happiness. I believe she and Mrs. Love are sisters. At any rate, they look more or less alike. Susie's fourth teacher had several names. His easiest name was Mr. Ault. He did not look much like Miss Joy. Susie did not like him at first. He was so tall and taught her such hard lessons. And when she would not listen, so often called Mr. Payne to come and punish her that she wished he would go away and never come back. But the more she looked at him, the more kind and dear his face appeared. And by and by she learned to love him with all her heart. The fifth teacher was Aunt Patience. She looked as if she had seen a good deal of trouble. But you must not fancy she looked sad or sour or bitter or anything bad or disagreeable. There was a serene smile on her face that made you love her at once. Another beautiful and holy teacher lived with Susie. His name was Faith. He was not older than Susie herself, and the only reason he knew any more than she did was this. He was an angel. He knew a good deal about heaven and about Jesus. He could tell her sweet stories from the Bible. His eyes shone just as stars shine in the sky, and his face looked peaceful, like the face of Aunt Patience, but more radiant and cheerful. Susie liked him, and he liked her. Have you so many teachers in your house? Perhaps you say no, but I am sure you have, and if you read on, perhaps you will see. To be sure, your Mrs. Love may not be exactly like Susie's Mrs. Love, but in most things she is. Chapter 2 When Susie was born, Mrs. Love came with her, as I have told you. She took the little baby gently in her arms and smiled upon her tenderly. If she had left her lying there, Susie would have died, and then I could not have written this book. Then Mrs. Love dressed her in soft, warm clothes. She put on a little tiny shirt, a flannel petticoat, a white frock, and such wee morsels of socks 
that when Susie grew up she gave them to her doll. I don't know whether you had on any socks or not. Perhaps your Mrs. Love said your little feet ought to keep each other warm and mustn't wear socks. It took some time to dress Susie. She was so small and weak that she could not help dress herself, nor hold up her head. But there was one thing she knew how to do that nobody ever taught her. She knew how to double up her little mite of a hand and suck it as hard as she could. I suppose she thought she was hungry. Do you suppose she would be alive now if she had had nothing but her hand to eat? No, indeed. So Mrs. Love took her to her mamma, who was very glad to give her some nice warm breakfast. If Mrs. Love had not been there, I dare say her mamma would not have given her any. Very likely she would have said, Oh, don't bring that child here. I'm tired and want to go to sleep. But then you know Mrs. Love was there. Now what do you think little Susie's first lesson was? Why, she had to learn to smile. Mrs. Love kept smiling and smiling, till at last Susie began to think to herself that perhaps she could do so too. So she really smiled. Then you should have seen and heard what went on. I declare, this child has just smiled, said her nurse. Oh, are you sure? cried her mamma. Bring her to me, let me see. Little darling, said Mrs. Love. When her papa came home to dinner that day, the nurse met him in the hall and said to him, The baby has smiled. And when he went up to the nursery, Mrs. Love said, Baby has learned to smile. And when he asked Susie's mamma how she did, she only said in a joyful voice, Don't you think our baby has smiled? So by that time he smiled though he shook his head as much as to say, I don't believe it. After this, Mrs. Love made everybody in the house hug and kiss Susie so much that it was a wonder how the little thing found room to grow. They did not kiss her on purpose, you know, but because they could not help it. Everything she did delighted the whole family, and one day the cook said, I do believe this child is going to have a dent in her chin and if she has a dent in her chin, I shall give up. She meant by that that she liked dents in people's chins. It was not long after this that Mrs. Love taught Susie to put up her little hand and pat her mamma's chin and cheek, and then to give her sweet kisses, and then to wind her fat soft arms around her neck and Miss Joy was almost always teaching her to spring and dance and to be such a happy little baby that it was a pleasure to go into the nursery and hear her shout and laugh and clap her hands and see her face all full of smiles. Chapter 3 But when Susie began to run about and could reach up to the table where her mamma's work basket stood, somebody besides kind Mrs. Love and laughing Miss Joy had to come and teach her, for there were scissors in the basket, and pins and needles, and Susie made up her mind that she would play with them. Every day, when she put up her hand to take the basket, her mamma would shake her head and say, No, no! And Susie would then begin to cry, and after a minute or two would snatch the basket again. One day her mamma was talking with another lady, and she did not see Susie when she put her hand out towards her basket. So Susie took it, and sat down upon the floor to have a good time with it. She tangled all the spools of thread together, and unrolled all the tape. She threw the buttons all over the floor. She took a piece of ribbon that her mamma had bought to tie her little shirts with, and put it round her neck. She tossed the hooks and eyes into a corner, and let a ball of yarn roll under the table. For all this time she was trying to get at the needle-book, which lay at the bottom of the basket. Just as she reached it, her mamma looked down and said, No, no! Susie knew very well what that meant, but she held on to the needle-book, until all of a sudden Mr. Payne gave her such a prick that she let it drop. 
he had scratched her with one of the needles. Susie gave a scream and looked very angrily at the needle-book, which she had now learned not to touch. But it was only a few days after this that she went to the fireplace and filled her clean white apron with coals and ashes. Her mamma took them away from her and shook her head and said, No, no, again and again. But as soon as Susie had another clean apron put on, she ran again to the fire and began to fill it with coals. And no matter how often her mamma said, No, no, she would keep doing it over and over. Then Mrs. Love said to her mamma, If we let Susie do so, some day she will get burned. We ought to punish her, so that she will mind when she is spoken to. Yes, I think so too, said her mamma. So Mrs. Love called Mr. Payne, and told him to slap Susie's little arms if she disobeyed again. It was not long before he had to come, and as soon as she saw him, Miss Joy, who had been frolicking with Susie a whole year, and never before had been absent from her, poor Miss Joy ran away and hid. As soon as Susie felt the slaps on her arm, she let the coals drop and began to cry. She looked at her arm, which bore the red marks of Mr. Payne's hand, and pitied it very much. But the slap did her good. It taught her to obey her mamma about the fire, and saved her from being burned up, as she certainly would have been if she had kept on playing with the coals. Mr. Payne soon went away, and he had hardly turned his back, when Miss Joy peeped out of the closet where she had been hiding, and made such a funny little face that Susie could not help laughing, and her face was both wet with tears and shining with smiles. She kissed her mamma and put her arms around her neck, and her mamma kissed her and said, Susie won't be naughty any more, and Susie smiled and said, No, no. Chapter 4 Before Susie was old enough to understand what Mr. Ott said to her, he used to tell her mamma what she should do for her baby, and she would mind him directly. But as soon as Susie was able to listen, herself, to what he said, he came and lived in the nursery, and when she went to walk, he went with her, and when she played, he was near her. He never went to sleep, but was always wide awake, and you could not touch him with your little finger, no matter how softly, but he would start up to see what you meant. One day, when Susie was tired of playing with her toys, she began to look about the room for something new. There was an inkstand on the table, and she thought she would stand on tiptoe and get it. But her mamma saw what she was doing, and she said, No, Susie, no! You must not touch my inkstand. Susie stopped a moment. Don't touch it, said Mr. Ott. I want it, said Susie. I want it very much. She put her hand upon it again and looked at her mamma to see what she would do. But her mamma could not do anything. She was lying sick in bed. Is my little Susie going to mind me? said she. Susie looked down and did not answer, but her little fingers were on the inkstand. "'Oh, don't be naughty, Susie,' said Mr. Ott. Then Susie looked up and smiled and ran away from the table. She felt very happy because she had been obedient. Miss Joy took hold of her hands and began to dance, and Mrs. Love kissed her and said, Dear Susie, precious little Susie, a good many times. Do you know who was lying in the bed with her mamma? It was Robbie, Susie's little baby brother. Two or three days after that, Susie did not feel well, and she thought she should like to sit in her mamma's lap and hear her sing. But there was Robbie lying upon it, taking up all the room. So she went up to him and pulled him by the frock and said, Get down, boy. He can't get down, said her mamma. He's too little. Then Susie was angry, and she said to Robbie, Go away, boy. Let Susie come up. 
and she lifted her hand and was just going to strike her little brother. But just then Mr. Ott said in quite a stern voice, "'Susie!' Then Susie stopped and listened. Her angry red face began to grow pleasant. She sat down on the rug at her mamma's feet and did not say another word. She had some teeth coming, and they made her feel almost sick, and always before this, if she did not feel well, she could sit in her mamma's lap and find comfort. While she was sitting on the floor, her mamma felt sorry for her, and longed to take her in her arms and kiss and soothe her. But now, dear good old Aunt Patience came and sat down on the rug by Susie's side, and she took her little tired head right into her own kind bosom, wiped away all the tears, and said, Never mind, by and by Robbie will go to sleep, and then it will be Susie's turn. And Susie looked up into her mamma's anxious face, and said, in a soft, sweet voice, Never mind, mamma. CHAPTER Five. When Susie went to bed at night, her mamma and Mrs. Love and the little angel Faith always went with her. Her mamma would kneel down with her, and Susie would fold her hands and pray to God to take care of her. And after she was in bed and the clothes were nicely tucked about her, Mrs. Love would kiss her, and then they would go downstairs, leaving her all alone with Faith. Sometimes Susie would fall asleep as soon as her head touched her pillow, and sometimes she would lie awake, thinking. One night, when she was about three years old, she awoke from a sound sleep and felt very lonely. The room was dark and still, and she had a great mind to begin to scream and cry. But, just as she was opening her mouth, Mr. Ott said to her, "'I wouldn't scream if I were you.' It frightens your mamma, and you know she isn't very well. Then Susie only sat up in bed and looked about, to see if her mamma were really not there. "'What's the matter, Susie?' asked Faith, coming very near her and sitting down by her crib. "'I'm afraid of the dark,' said Susie. "'Oh, I wouldn't be afraid,' said Faith. God can see right through the dark, and he can see you. He won't let anything hurt you. How do you know? I know because you asked him to take care of you just before you went to sleep. Do you think he heard me when I arched him? Oh, yes, he can hear just as easy. Susie lay down and was silent a little while but she still felt afraid. So she folded her hands together and said softly, Oh God, I am afraid of the dark. Please don't let it hurt me. I ask you to take care of me. I ask you to keep awake and take care of me. My mamma is not better enough to keep awake. Amen. Then Faith said, I am sure God heard you. He will certainly take good care of you. So Susie began to leave off feeling afraid. She put her hand under her cheek, shut her eyes, and fell into a sweet sleep. When her mamma came up to bed, she stopped in the nursery to look at Susie, and she saw a sweet, peaceful smile on her face. I wonder what she is dreaming about, thought she. In the morning, Robbie crept into her bed and kissed her till she awoke. Oh, is that you, Robbie? said she. Nursey, Robbie creeped right over you into my crib. Isn't he a little dear? I couldn't get to sleep last night, and I couldn't, and I couldn't, and at last God came and got me to sleep. Oh, Susie, said Nurse. Well, I think he came, said Susie. CHAPTER Six. It was Christmas Day and very cold. Susie and Miss Joy ran out of doors and threw snow at each other till their cheeks were like roses. Robbie sat in his high chair at the nursery window, and Susie threw little bits of snow up to him, and he kept trying to catch them. 
When Susie went in, she found Mrs. Love packing up baskets of good things to be sent away. There was one, not very large, but pretty heavy, full of sugar and tea for poor old Mrs. Haddentenny. "'Oh, Mama," said Susie, "'I can lift this basket. I can carry it four miles.' Her mamma laughed. "'Well, I can carry it three miles,' said Susie. Her mamma only smiled and kept on helping Mrs. Love fill the other baskets. "'I could carry it as far as across the street,' said Susie. "'Yes, I suppose you could, and I do not know but I shall let you carry it,' said Mrs. Love. "'All myself?' Yes, all yourself. Then Susie was delighted indeed. She ran upstairs to get her coat and hood, and while nurse was putting them on, she said, Oh, I'm going to carry a great big basket full of good things to a poor woman. I too, said Robbie. Oh, no, Robbie, you are not old enough. When you are as old as I am, then you shall go. "'Oh, I suppose you lived in the ark,' said their nurse, patting her fat cheek. Then Susie ran downstairs, and they put the basket in her hands, and told her to go straight across the street and round the corner, and the very first house would be Mrs. Haddentenny's. Susie had never been out alone in her life. She took up the basket and marched off, while they all watched her from the basement windows. The basket was heavy, but she did not mind that, because Miss Joy went with her and helped carry it. And then old Mrs. Haddentenny was waiting at the door, all ready to take it, for she knew it was coming, and she wished Susie a Merry Christmas, and said, Now I mean to have a nice hot cup of tea for my Christmas. When Susie got home, Miss Joy could hardly let her stand still long enough to have her things taken off. Oh, Mama, said she, it's nice to carry baskets to poor old women. It's better than hanging up stockings. Indeed it is, said her Mama, a great deal better. And I am going to send Robbie now to Mrs. Thankful's with ever so many things. Robbie is too little, said Susie. Don't be selfish, Susie, said Mr. Ott. Susie blushed. He is too little, said she. He never walked out in his life. Oh, no, he isn't too little, said Mrs. Love. He carries the Bible to his papa every morning at prayers, and he never is so happy as when he has something to give away. He is a sweet child, just as sweet as a lamb. So he is, said Susie. I'm glad he is going. He shall wear my mittens if he wants to, and I'll look out of the window and see him go. Then Mr. Ott smiled on Susie with such a smile that she really felt as if the sun had been shining down to warm her. I begin to like Mr. Ott, thought she. He is very pleasant. On the whole, Susie, you may go with Robbie, said Mrs. Love. You and Nurse can carry the basket till you get to the house, and then you can give it to him. So Susie and Miss Joy scampered upstairs, and they told Robbie all about it, and Robbie put his arms round Susie's neck and kissed her, and when he gave the basket to Mrs. Thankful, his face had more than a basket full of delight in it, and Susie was the very happiest little girl you ever saw. Chapter 7 you may think that, after this, Susie did not wait for Mr. Ott to speak twice, but would mind his softest whisper. But the very next day, as she and Robbie were playing together, and Miss Joy was helping them build a house, a very sad affair happened, about which I will tell you. Robbie was a little bit of a rogue, and he liked to tease, as most boys do. He would come behind Susie and kiss her neck, and then run off and hide behind his nurse, who sat there at work. Then Susie would pretend to be quite angry, 
and would throw a block after him and make believe cry. Then Robbie would creep out softly and kiss her again, or perhaps throw the block back at Susie. Now, as Susie was two years older than Robbie, she could throw the block in such a way as not to hit him. But Robbie could not throw so well, and pretty soon he threw a large block right into her face. The moment she felt it, Susie flew into a great rage and caught up the first thing that she could find to throw at Robbie, who was so frightened that he could not speak or move. Stop, stop, said Mr. Ott. Don't hurt your dear little brother. He was only playing. I won't stop, said Susie. He is a naughty, wicked boy. He hurted me on purpose. Do you know that God is looking right at your little angry face? said Mr. Ott. I don't care, said Susie and was just going to throw at Robbie a great heavy wooden ball that she had snatched up in her anger, when she felt her hand seized from behind. She looked up and saw her mamma's grieved face. "'Go into the closet,' said Mr. Ott. "'Go, before your mamma has to bid you. You are not fit to stay here.' Then Susie got up, sorrowfully, and went into the closet and shut the door. No dear Mrs. Love, no laughing Miss Joy, went with her. She felt as if her heart would break. Oh, what a naughty little girl you are, said Mr. Ott. Do you think God loved you when you were so angry? Do you think the dear holy children up in heaven do so? No, said Susie. I don't think God loves me. I am very naughty. I will ask him to forgive me. Then she knelt down and clasped her hands and said, Oh, God, you are a good God. I love you, good God. I am sorry I was naughty. I hope you won't say I can't come into heaven. I want to come in, really. Her mamma listened at the door and heard her sobbing. Susie, said she, do you want to come out? No, Mama, said Susie. I am not better enough yet. Then she heard her Mama going away from the closet door, and it was very silent in the nursery, for Robbie had been carried downstairs. But Susie was not all alone. Aunt Patience was with her in the dark closet, and so was the little angel, Faith. I am the naughtiest child in the world, said Susie. But God loves you, and he will forgive you, said Faith. Are there any children in heaven who used to be as naughty as I am? I don't know, said Faith. You might ask your mother. Then Susie burst into tears again. I don't believe there are, said she. But God can make you good, said Faith. Yes, but it takes time, said Aunt Patience. You must keep trying and trying, and keep praying and praying, and by and by, you'll be an angel, said Faith. Susie, said her mamma, are you good now? Yes, mamma, I guess I'm getting good, said Susie in a little meek voice. Then her mamma opened the door and took her in her arms and kissed her, and Robbie came and laid his little sunny head on her lap, and said, for he only knew a few words, My Susie! And Susie began to cry again. Mamma, said she at last, do you think there are any children in heaven as naughty as I am? Yes, said her mamma. I think there are a great many. How did they get there? Jesus carried them. He loves to forgive little children, and they are not naughty after they get there. Then the little angel Faith smiled and was pleased, and Susie said in her heart, I will try to be good and mind God. I am sorry I was angry. 
I will try to be like Jesus. By this time she looked pale and tired, and Mrs. Love pitied her. She sat rocking her in her lap till she fell asleep, and her mamma watched her and prayed for her silently in her heart. Nobody heard her but God. She was asking him to forgive her poor little Susie and make her gentle and mild like Jesus. Chapter 8 One very cold day, about two months after Christmas, Susie was playing with a little village. Her mamma noticed that every time any of the things fell down, she gave a little impatient cry. "'I'm afraid Susie isn't well,' said she to herself. Towards night Susie put her hand up to her head and cried out, "'Oh, my head! My head!' Her mamma took her up and felt of her hands. They were very hot. She saw that her face was quite red. "'I will put your feet in hot water,' said she, and you shall go to bed, and perhaps you will feel better by and by. So she carried Susie up into the nursery and soaked her feet, and after she had put her into her crib she said, Now I am going to give you a ride into my room. You are going to sleep by me tonight. Susie tried to smile, but she felt too sick. Her mamma felt very uneasy but she went to the washstand and wet a cloth in water to lay on Susie's head. When Susie saw what she was going to do, she said, I wouldn't do so, dear. She was so sick that she called her mamma, dear. It may make your head feel better, said her mamma. Well, said Susie. But in the morning she was a great deal sicker, and her papa went to good Dr. Merton and said to him, My little Susie is very sick. I wish you would come and see her. When Dr. Merton came, he said to Susie, Where do you feel sick, Susie? Everywhere, said Susie. My head feels sick and my arms feel sick, and I have been slapped all over. She meant that she felt sore and tired. I think she will have a fever, said the doctor. Then he told her mamma what to do for her, and went away. After he had gone, the little angel Faith went up to Susie, and they whispered together some time. The next day Susie said to her mamma, If I get much sicker, I think I shall die. Do you want to die, dear Susie? said her mamma. My poor little head won't ache up there. My lips won't be sore up there. I shall never be naughty up there. Would you go and leave poor Mamma? It hurt Susie to turn over. She had been lying with her face to the wall, but she now turned over, stretched out her hand and said, I will let you go with me, you dear little Mamma. Then her mamma could not help crying. She said to herself, I love my little Susie dearly. I don't know what I should do if she should die, but she would be very happy in heaven. I will ask God to do just as he thinks best. Then she heard Susie and Faith talking to each other. If I go to heaven, I shall see Jesus, said Susie. And your dear grandmamma, too. Yes, and my little cunning little Uncle Robbie. And perhaps God will let you come flying down to get the souls of little dead babies and carry them up to heaven. Mama, I am very tired, said Susie. Oh, so tired. Then Aunt Patience came and stood by the crib and never moved away for many weeks. She bathed Susie's hot head. She helped her bear the hard pain. She made her try to comfort her mamma. Mamma, don't you want to lie down? Mamma, don't I tire you? Susie would ask many times every day. Mamma, are you too tired to wet my lips? 
At last the doctor said one morning, Susie is better. She is going to get well. And as he was going downstairs he met Sarah, the cook, who looked at him as much as to say, How is she? She is better, said the doctor. Oh, I'm so glad, said Sarah, for she has been so patient. You can't think. And Sarah put her apron right over her head and began to cry. The next day Robbie was allowed to come in and look at Susie. He did not know what had become of her. He stood on tiptoe and peeped at her through the bars of her crib, and made signs to her to get up and play with him. Miss Joy had been away on a journey all the time Susie had been sick, but now she came back, bag and baggage, with ever so many toys and books that she had been saving till Susie got well. She peeped through the bars, too, and smiled, and Susie smiled and held out her hand as much as to say, "'How do you do, Miss Joy? Where have you been?' "'Oh, I always go away when you are in trouble,' said Miss Joy." "'Then you are not so good as Mrs. Love,' said Susie, "'for she never goes away or leaves me when I am sick.'" Chapter 9 While Susie was sick, her mamma and Mrs. Love and Aunt Patience never left her. They were all the time doing something to comfort her. But now she was getting well fast, and felt very weak and tired, and Aunt Patience often went away, and then Susie would cry and fret and make her mamma take her up and lay her down and carry her about all day long. She would not let her go out of her sight without crying. Now you must not blame her for this. You must remember how feeble she was and how sick she had been. And don't you know how you behaved when you had the measles? One morning Susie's mamma put a pillow in a low chair and took her up and dressed her in a pink dressing-gown that she had made on purpose for her to wear when she was sick. Then she combed her hair. Most of it had been cut off when Susie was sick, and what little was left was all matted together. Then she placed the small table that Susie had for her last birthday present in front of the chair, and on the table she put a cup and saucer, a plate, a teapot, a cream pitcher, and a sugar bowl. These had just been brought to Susie by a kind friend who did not know she had been sick. Susie looked at her mamma as she moved about, getting her breakfast ready, but did not say a word. She could not talk half so much now as she could before the fever left her, for she was very weak. At last her mamma said, Susie, why don't you ask me where this pretty tea-set came from? I don't know, said Susie faintly. Oh, you are too tired to talk, darling. Mamma did not know how weak you were. You shall have your breakfast, then you will feel better. So some nice soft toast was brought in, and Susie ate a large slice, and then another small slice and drank two cups of milk and water. By that time she was so refreshed that she began to admire her new cups and saucers, and she wanted Robbie to come in and see them. Robbie came in with Susie's great doll in his arms. Susie seemed glad to see her doll once more, and in the course of the day she played a little with it. So the next day her mamma said to her, "'Now, my dear little Susie,' I want you to spare Mamma a little while. I want to go and see Mrs. Wilson, whose baby is very sick. You can have Dolly get into bed with you. I won't be gone long. On hearing this, Susie began to cry. Susie, dear, if you were very sick and going to die, don't you think Mrs. Wilson would come to see me? Would it comfort you if she came? Yes, it would, and I want to go and comfort her, because pretty soon she won't have any little baby. Let your mamma go, Susie, like a good girl, said Mrs. Love. I'll stay with you while she has gone. Yes, said Mr. Ott, let her go. Do go, dear mamma, 
said Susie. I know you won't be gone long from your sick child. Her mamma smiled, and Mr. Ott said to her, Susie, you and I are getting to be very good friends. One of these days, if you have a little Susie of your own, I will be her friend too, and will help her to be a comfort to you. Susie smiled, and began to think so hard about having a little Susie of her own, that she was surprised when her mamma came back to see her so soon. Did you see the little baby, mamma? Yes, I saw it. It is very sick. It is going to die. When it is dead, will they bury it in the ground? Yes, darling. And then will they go home and leave it all alone? Susie, I once read a very sweet sentence about that. I will repeat it to you. It is not we that go home and leave our friends behind. No, it is they that are gone to the better home and left us behind. That dear little baby will get home before its mamma. Home to heaven, said the angel Faith, drawing nigh. I should think it would be pretty glad when it got there, said Susie. I suppose it would be looking round to see if Mr. Payne had got to heaven, too. And when it found he hadn't, it would be pretty glad. CHAPTER Ten. Though Susie was now able to be dressed every day, she was still feeble, and her mamma spent most of the time in amusing her. Sometimes she held her in her arms and sang all sorts of funny things out of Mother Goose to make her laugh. Sometimes she told her stories about what she used to do when she was a little girl. And sometimes they would get to talking and laughing about Miss Joy, Mrs. Love, and Susie's other teachers. One day Susie was more restless than usual. She did not like to lie in bed or to sit up. She was tired of being rocked and of being drawn about the room in her little carriage. Mama, said she, don't you remember how Uncle Henny used to carry Robbie right in his hands? With Robbie's head leaning against his breast? Yes, I remember. Do you think it would rest you if I should carry you so? Yes, Mama, if you feel better enough. Then her Mama made a chair of her two hands, and Susie sat on the chair with her head leaning back. It felt very comfortable. I've carried you and Robbie a good many miles in this way, said her mamma. Both at once? Oh, no, one at a time, when you were babies, and it was in the night when other folks were asleep. Tell me more, dear mamma. Did I ever tell you about the catnip tea that I scalded my hands with? Oh, then I must tell you now. Robbie was not well. Mr. Payne was hurting him. Oh, did Robbie have a Mr. Payne? said Susie. Yes, he had him indeed. Well, Robbie was to have some catnip tea, and I put it on the fire to warm. And while it was warming, I kept rocking Robbie and singing to him, and all at once he fell asleep. Just then the catnip tea began to boil. I looked at Robbie to see if it would do to lay him down and found he was only half asleep. While I waited, the tea kept boiling, and I began to be afraid it would boil over and put out my fire. Then I looked at Robbie, and he began to open his eyes. I was sure he would wake up and cry if I tried to lay him down, and I was afraid to take the catnip tea off the fire, because it was so hot, and I had only one hand to do it with. You know Robbie lay on the other arm, but at last, just as it was going to boil over, I took hold of the cup and was lifting it gently off the fire, when Robbie woke up and gave my hand a little jerk, so that the hot tea flew all over it. How did it feel? Not very nice. Mr. Payne made my fingers smart. Oh, did you have a Mr. Payne, Mama? Yes, I had one, and I've a Mr. Payne now. He's pushing a pin right into my side, just under your head. 
If you could move your head a little bit, I could get it out. Susie moved her head, and the pin was pulled out. By this time she felt quite rested. She had forgotten all her discomfort. It doesn't take much to amuse little folks. If you had a Mr. Payne, I suppose you had a Mr. Ought, said Susie. Did you like him, Mama? I don't think I liked him very well at first, but that was because I did not know him. I suppose you always minded him. No, I remember very well that I often disobeyed him, and then he used to follow me about and would not give me any peace. Mama, cried Susie, sitting up quite straight, don't you wish you was a little girl like me? And then we could play together with my blocks. You could hand me the blocks, and I could build a house with them. Oh, if you feel able to build a house, I can hand you the blocks. If I were a little girl, perhaps we should quarrel. Perhaps I should want you to hand me the blocks and let me build the house. Susie smiled. She felt a great deal better. The walking and the talking had rested her. And now it was time for her dinner, and Nurse came in to bring it. Robbie came too, and while Susie was eating her chicken broth, he watched her, and looked as if he wanted some too. "'Give him a little, do,' said Mrs. Love. "'It isn't good for him,' said Susie. "'I'm afraid it would hurt him.' "'Oh, let him have one taste, do.' "'It would burn his mouth.' You might blow it, then. I don't believe he wants any. All this time Susie kept eating as fast as she could, and wishing Robbie would go away and not stand there, looking so good and lovely. But it wouldn't do. There, he shall have some, little dear, she said at last, and she held out her spoon and Robbie opened his rosy mouth just like a young bird while she fed him, and she felt as happy as if she were the great mother bird, and not just little Susie Miller. Chapter 11 It was cold, wintry weather when Susie was taken sick, but it was beginning to be spring when she was well enough to go out of doors. Her papa would not trust anyone else to take her the first time she rode out. He put her, on a pillow, into her little carriage, and drew her round the square. By the time they got back to the house again, Susie was so tired that she wanted to go in. But the next day she rode round the square twice, and her papa carried her, in his arms, up and down the yard besides. As she lay with her head on his shoulder, she often said, "'Do I tire you, dear papa?' And then he would laugh and say she didn't weigh so much as a little kitten, and he could carry a big kitten all day. Papa, said Susie at last, Mama says Mr. Payne has made me a pretty long visit. Yes, it was pretty long. Don't you hope he never will come again, Papa? I don't know. He has taught my little Susie so many good lessons that I shall want him to come and teach me next news. Susie thought this very funny. Why, what could he teach you, Papa? Don't you know everything? Oh, he might teach me to think of other people more than of myself. If my Papa were carrying me about, he might put it into my head to ask him every now and then, Don't I tire you? Papa, you are a funny man said Susie. You are almost as funny as Mama. I'm a pretty good horse, I think, said her Papa. See how I can trot. Susie laughed and looked up to the nursery window to see if Robbie were in sight. Yes, there was his little smiling face close to the glass. Oh, Papa, put me down now, please, Papa, and give Robbie a ride. Robbie has got four great big teeth coming, and he doesn't feel nice at all. Her papa kissed her and carried her upstairs, and she sat in Robbie's chair and looked down into the yard and saw her papa be a horse and trot up and down with the merry little fellow on his back. 
She felt very happy indeed, because she had given him so much pleasure. But she was tired, and her head ached a little. "'My headache aches,' said she to nurse. "'I should think it would with that thick hood on this warm day. You are nothing but a big bundle. Come, I'll take off your things, and you shall sit in my lap, and I'll... Let me see, what shall I do? Oh, I'll tell you about Robbie. What about him? asked Susie. Why, how he behaved when you were sick. Don't you think he wouldn't eat anything at first? He would go and get your chair ready for you, and climb up into his, and then he would sit waiting for you to come. His dinner would get as cold as a stone before he would touch it. One day he slipped into your mamma's room and tried to pull you out of your crib, and when he found you took no notice of him, he came back and got the hearth brush and tried to get you up by pushing it through the bars. I suppose he thought I was a ball, said Susie. I dare say he did, said Nurse, for he always gets his ball from under the sofa with the hearth brush. Can't you think of something else? asked Susie. Why, yes, said Nurse. I was going to ask you if you wouldn't like to come back and get your dinner and supper with him. He grieves so for you. On my little table? Yes. With my new cups and saucers? He would break my new cups and saucers all to pieces. Well, it's no matter. I only thought, as he is such a little dear, and his teeth tease him so. Such a sweet little darling, said Mrs. Love, that you would like to come back and eat with him, said Nurse. Well, I will, said Susie. I'll come back to supper, and I'll let him pour out tea, and I'll let him sit on my cushion. You see he is such a little fellow, said Mrs. Love, and so good and gentle, and he loves you so dearly. So Susie told her mamma she was going to eat with Robbie now, and for answer she got a sweet kiss. It was not long before Susie became strong enough to go with her mamma into the country, where she stayed all summer, and grew quite plump and rosy. Robbie and Mrs. Love and Miss Joy and Mr. Ott and the angel Faith went, too, but they were not sure whether Mr. Payne went or not. Susie said she saw his rod in her mamma's trunk, but she might have been mistaken, you know. End of Little Susie's Six Teachers First Series by Elizabeth Prentice Read by Darvinia